Welcome to Kuwait's Industrial Automation and Control Systems Cybersecurity Conference, KIAX Cybersecurity 2014, 25 through 26 May 2014. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Smith talking there, of course, on the um, landscape, the threats to the oil and the gas industry. Thank you very much indeed. So for our final speaker before lunch, I am delighted to welcome to the stage Ahmed al Malefi, the team leader of computer operations and administration, and here to speak on the title of Industrial Automotions and Control Systems Security, a um, ISA 99. And a little bit of information on Ahmed. He's been working in the Kuwait oil sector for over 18 years and is very well versed in the matters of IT, infrastructure, IT planning, and other relevant fields. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ahmed al Malefi. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. By now we can say uh, good afternoon. Uh, our presentation is about information, uh, industrial automation and control system security. By that time and uh, because of, I'm, I don't know if I'm lucky or not having my presentation just before the break and lunch break, so I back up my, uh, you can put the presentation please. Okay, good. So our presentation is industrial automation and control system security. And by that time, I think we have to uh, grab your attention. So I have my backup plan. There will be a question at the end of the presentation by me, not you, and who will answer the question. He will get a spot uh, gift from me. Okay. So you are ready. I want to ask you how uh, many of you are from process, uh, instrument, chemical engineers, and uh, okay, good, we have a, a quite good number. Uh, maybe your uh, boss once a day come and ask you. Here we are hearing a lot about uh, this uh, cyber security, and uh, is our process is secured enough? So, what do you think? And the word enough, how, how you can answer it. Uh, an IT guy, once he come to you and say, bringing the, the network map and tell you, look, we are going to install a firewall here in that point of the network. And uh, you start ar arguing with them and telling them, telling flowing from the, uh, flowing flo from the, uh, uh, process to the management, to the uh, finance people, marketing people. So this kind of argument will be uh, arising there. Your vendor will come and tell you, okay, we have a solution, a security solution, and we want to, you to use it in your network. So what do you think? Yes, no. Uh, and one of the th th uh, fourth thing maybe uh, the policy and, uh, and procedure which you are going to implement. Is it the right one? Yes, no. Those are type of question and other uh, question might be arises. And here the need for a guideline, a reference, where we can back to it and say that yes, this is right, we are going to implement this uh, practice, solution, policy and procedure or not. Right. Is it one standard? Is it one security standard uh, or, or more? Here I'm listing some of them. Uh, for example, ISO, uh, ISO 27000, which we are using it in KMBC for business network uh, for, uh, I think, about seven years back. Is we are manage it very well in the business network, but, uh, where all of us as a user are there. But for the process, I don't think it is easy to implement there because I, as my colleague he state, uh, talk about the batching, it's one of the obstacles that you cannot simply uh, implement it in, inside the process. And this 
stop us from or make a difficulty to implement this uh, uh, standard. Other standards are, could be uh, country specific or uh, field or industrial specific. So that's why I choose I, uh, ISA, 20, uh, ISA 99 Industrial Automation and Control System Security. Uh, this standard is uh, widely accepted. Um, manufacturing are using it in the, uh, doing their solutions. So we try, uh, we focus and want to talk about it. Great. Uh, in this slide, I want to answer a question that may be in mind of uh, some of you or most of you that why nowadays we are talking about cybersecurity for a process network uh, a lot. Why this hype? And uh, to answer this question, we have to have some uh, uh, background history. Earlier, we have uh, in these two clouds, we have the business network where all of us are sitting there, uh, uh, management, finance, marketing, and uh, there is what, uh, the process people call, call it air gap, uh, the separation between the two network and then the process network. And the process network earlier, and here we are talking about uh, kind of petrochemical, power plant, and uh, chemical processing. This network used to be separated, and data going from the process to the, uh, the business network manually. This is uh, in the past. And what happened with the time that pro uh, network changed uh, slowly from proprietary systems to an open system. And by open system, uh, we are talking here about having uh, OS, like operating system like Windows, Linux, uh, TCB IP protocol. So those which we are using in the business network now slowly, slowly are being used inside the uh, process network. And it has given a, a, a great advantage of the link. Now we have a link between the two networks and people uh, in the management can uh, uh, receive online uh, data on time, real-time data. And uh, what is the drawback of this? That, uh, the risk associated always when you have open, there is a benefit of having real time, but on the other side, a risk is there associated with it because it's easy to hack. Uh, if you saw, I, I intentionally put a, a back door. We are all uh, thinking of that the thread coming from the pro, uh, business network where the hacker going through the business network, hack there and uh, reach the process. This is true. But maybe the IT people, to some good extent, they can control it by implementing uh, the measures and securities. But there is uh, back doors uh, due to the people working on the field, have no idea about IT, they have no uh, even interest in that area, no experience, and they might simply uh, be a, a way where the hackers or intruders get into the network by just give them a flash and go and to the one of the uh, uh, servers there, plug the flash, or there is a network port there which is open, and they can uh, just plug it, and uh, the virus or uh, payload are downloaded in the in the, in the network. So uh, this is very important, and uh, the hackers are can getting into network. So this is the difference. That's why from uh, where we get that uh, uh, interest. And now with the mobility, when I, we are talking about mobility, now the management or people are using their mobiles or uh, iPads to access the, their data, the application. Now, while they are sitting here in the conference, they can go to the H, uh, HR or to, to whatever financial system in their organization and improving invoices. So this it has a, a feature, but a, a risk associated with it. OK, it went very fast. Uh, here I put some example. Maybe you talk about it. I, I don't want to go through them. But just I want to highlight that the, those risks are recent uh, for the like past two or three years. They are in the oil and gas and power plant uh, field and also in our region. And those are only a few examples. Maybe some examples are not mentioned or not officially announced, but some organization already get hacked. 
uh, also the trend shows that this is increasing. So it is a real, a real risk, not, not, nothing يعني, over exaggerated. Okay, when we compromise a, net, a network being compromised, uh, what kind of damage, what the level of damages we can get? Simply the, the plant might be sh uh, shut down, forced to be shut down, or the, uh, it, which lead to economical loss, or endangerment of people and the safety of the people and public. So uh, we, we, we have to give it a real, real attention. Uh, this I call it two Bs and one T, uh, which uh, I, I'm calling the dim uh, protection dimension. Uh, when uh, using a standard or any standard or without even referring to the standard, there is three things, three dimensions we want to focus our protection on it. The people, the process, and the technology. And from my opinion, I am seeing the people is the most important factor in the security. If you be, uh, the people are not well educated, well aware of the, the security, they are not knowing what the mean of having complex password, not sharing the password, then there will, uh, there will be no use of having a standard, having implementing policies and the procedures, having a, a good technologies uh, implemented, because at the end of the day, people who will be impl implementing those uh, uh, policies and procedures and operating those solutions. So uh, the people here, we have to raise their awareness, make sure that they are having a good training. I like to uh, link it to what we have in HSC, health, safety, and uh, environment. Maybe before 10 years, we don't have, I'm talking here in the region, that awareness of health, safety, and environment. But now we have uh, well established, organized uh, uh, sub uh, divisions, departments in our organization taking care. They have the pro their uh, programs there to implement health, safety, and environment. The same thing we, now we want to do it for the cyber security because now it is going to the business and uh, core business of the, the uh, oil and gas or even the power plant. Uh, for processes, we need to implement a secured policies and procedures. And uh, for technologies, we need to implement the technologies. We need to check uh, the vulnerabilities. We need to, how to see how to address the vulnerabilities. Maybe not like the uh, business uh, network where we just, uh, there is a batch coming, just go and implement the batch and uh, restart the machine. And, and, and the process network, as you heard that, you cannot do it. Maybe restarting one of the machines causing the plant to be shut down. So you need to schedule it till the next, uh, uh, next shutdown. And in this case, you have to have some uh, rules or procedure to protect that asset until the new, until the uh, time to batch it or even replace the, the solution. ISA. Before going to the standard, let me give you a brief about the organization which is introducing this standard. It is International Society of Automation. It is a non-profit uh, non organization, sets automation standards. So ISA 99 is one of their standards, but this is an, uh, uh, have a lots of other standards. It is uh, about 70 years old organization and uh, it has 30,000 members worldwide. So ISA 99 is the first set of uh, security uh, for IT, uh, for industrial automation and control systems. Uh, it's approved by American National Standards Institute. And uh, it's uh, co focusing on electronic security uh, of a system. Uh, it is uh, the, 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 those standards and the technical reports are organized according to uh, ISO directives and taking the number 62,443. So all the, when we go to the next slide, we'll, you will show it, it all have this uh, number for each category and subcategories. Uh, 
this is a layout of the standard. It has the four categories here and the subcategories in each of those uh, uh, standards. Okay, the four categories is general, policies and procedure, system, and component. By general, we, uh, you will find there all the terminologies, concepts, uh, model for uh, electronic uh, security of, of IACs, which is industrial automation and control systems. In policies and procedures uh, category, you will have the guidelines for establishing and operating the security. And the third one, which is system, will go a little bit deep in it. It has the integrating security aspect for process networks. So the, the implementation part is addressed in that category. And the component usually for the vendors are system integrators. When they develop their solution, they back to that category and subcategories underneath it. Okay. We will be now talking about the systems. And uh, here I will be addressing three terminologies uh, used in the, uh, uh, out of this core concept or the system. First of, of, of all, I want to talk about, they are talking here about zoning. So dividing the network into, uh, as IT, we are call it uh, VLANs by using fi firewalls. So networks are separated into different zones. And then uh, uh, the second uh, terminology they are using is conduit. So the, the communication between those uh, zones using a conduit, which is a secured way of communication. And the coloring here, I will, uh, we are using the red and purple for the way where the, those separated zones in the network are communicating to each other. And the third terminology I want you to know about it is security level. So the organization the network should be divided into uh, zones. And the, the, the zones are following the concept or strategy of defense in depth. And there will be a conduit to communicate between the zones. And there also the last thing is security level. And it is widely accepted. Uh, for the defense in depth, uh, just let me back one, one slide just to, to tell you secure, why we use this uh, uh, zoning. Assume it, uh, your network being hacked and somebody managed to go to one of the, the areas. Uh, the, sorry, the, this laser pointer is not working on the screen. But let's assume that they are managed to hack this part of your network here. So. And this, uh, if the network is open, to, uh, open without a firewall or segregation, what happened is he easily can go from one area to another area and the damage will be increased. By zoning, the damage will be limited to the area that uh, he managed to hack and uh, get in. Maybe if your network is weak, he also can go to the other area, but you make uh, his life is difficult. So this is the in-depth strategy, uh, defense and strategy, in-depth. Okay, the security levels. This is uh, the third terminology which I want to talk about it, which is in, inside the zones. Here's an example of two zones. Each zone, as per the standard, should have its own security level, and they call it security level target. So you have to give it a target. This segregation is based on uh, how critical is the zone or the, what type of operation is doing. So this segmentation is taking this into consideration. So security level target is about the zone or the VLAN, which we do it in, as a network people. And inside that zone, there will be what they call it security level capacity. Security level capacity means that the items there have its own security. Let's assume that you have Windows XP in a zone A and Windows NT and BLC network. So the security will be, you have to leverage the security of that machine to meet the zone itself, the security of the zone. If they are not, as I mentioned, then you have to lever leverage it. 
how you leverage it either by uh, sorry either by having uh, implementing new systems or having a new policy or having a mix of them together to leverage the security level within the that component to meet the security z z zone okay so last two three slides the challenges in my point of view i i i'm having three we have uh, three challenges and uh, i'm seeing it highly especially in our region the first challenge is the culture we, uh, so still the cyber security or um, hacking is not uh, to the level of expectation it is much much danger than we are here in our region think of it. So this type of mentality we need uh, to change it. And this conference is يعني, really uh, into this direction. The second challenge I'm seeing it is the gap between IT people and the process. The IT people is focusing on the business network and they are not going to the process network. And process people are focusing on the production and they are not care about the security. And this is good opportunity for the hackers to get into the network. So this gap, we need to work to bridge it. And I think our colleagues in Equid they have a good exercise yeah, in this area. Last thing I want to highlight it is the uh, implementation of, of the uh, remediation, the, the gaps inside the, the process network. Because of the nature process and how it is a critical and you cannot, for example, change item easily, re restarting the system, then it will be a challenge there uh, to, to implement it. It's not like uh, business networks just pick up the machine and bring another machine. It's not, not straightforward. Okay. And to summarize uh, the, this quick uh, presentation, compromising the network is a disaster. and. We know how and why. Uh, the risk is come because we implement an open system. We take the Windows, the IB protocols, and all what we have in our network, uh, business network, and implement it inside the process network. The third th thing is there is a gray area between IT and process, and we have to address it. ISA 99 standard is widely used and accepted. Uh, the core concept of ISA 99 is talking about three uh, terminologies when we take this, the uh, category of the systems. It talk about zoning, conduits, and security levels. Uh, electronic security is everyone's responsibility. We have to have this in our mentality and uh, from the top management until the operator in the field. It's everybody's security. It's not uh, IT security or X uh, uh, title. It's everybody's security. Employee awareness is key element and this conference is kind of this awareness. And uh, to conclude, to have a secured system or secured environment, especially when you have a, a huge big uh, organization, something you cannot reach it. Just you, ne you need to develop your awareness to eliminate the risk or to mitigate it and make the business on the process is uh, running smooth uh, without uh, interrupting the business. Uh, thank you. And, uh, your questions before I have my question. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have some time for questions. I believe we've got time for certainly one, maybe two. If you could please mention your name, your company, and your question only. Where was my gentleman? There you are. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Ahmed Al Ghamdi from Saudi Aramco Oil Company. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Actually, uh, you highlighted very important uh, point, which is educating people. You could spend millions uh, protecting your network, and with a small mistake from one of your operator, you compromise uh, the whole network. Uh, my question is uh, regarding zoning. Actually, you mentioned zoning, but you didn't mention the type of zoning. Uh, ISA uh, 99 does uh, they request 
logical separation or physical separation between both of the network, which is IT network and uh, your process network. Because you know when you call, you say zoning, some people they said when you implement, let's say, uh, logical separation, it's enough. Uh, some people they go to extreme, saying no, it's physical separation. I have to have a dedicated network for uh, uh, my process uh, and even my SCADA network. Uh, so what is the measure? What is the boundaries? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, here I make it high level. I didn't go into, de into details, but uh, when you talk about separation or networking, you, you need to implement the firewalls. It's the nature of the business inside the network. Also, I mentioned the cricket, uh, how critical is that part which you uh, need to protect it. And the measures to do the separation is having different areas. Yani, uh, VLANs is one of the ways if we want to go technical. The, the, Firewalls, how you are configuring the firewalls, how the flow inside uh, from uh, one part of the network, for example, level three, so level 3.5, to go to the business network. All this to be taken into consideration when you're doing uh, implementation. And this is a little bit يعني, deep uh, technical. We can discuss it. يعني, after. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm Mohamed Al Saeed uh, from Saudi Aramco. Mm -hmm. My question is We heard uh, last maybe a uh, few years about cybersecurity, how we can protect process automation systems and networks. And one of our uh, good leaders today said 1 billion losses from cybersecurity in the process and automation systems. The question is We are really see these days. We are trying to secure the network more and more. But I feel there is a high impact on the business needs. So I would guess how we can determine the business impacts, losses, because of having more security measures. Uh, I don't get your question. Uh, the, 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 uh, to conclude, my question, my question is what is the balance? How we can make a balance between the business needs and security. We don't want to control our networks and system and impact the business. There is a lot of business opportunity we may miss because of the controls that we have in terms of security. Uh, exactly, and it is a, a joint effort. It's not just uh, uh, IT guy coming to you, I will put uh, the firewall. Let's uh, talk about our experience in KMBC. Last year, we implemented the zoning uh, of DMZ inside the, uh, to protect our process network. And it, it's not just coming like this and we say, uh, we put it and we said, uh, go ahead, and uh, we will just uh, put it and uh, the, you take care of, out, uh, of your process. No, we sit with the process people, we meet and we uh, d uh, define where to put the servers, each server, each station, and to make sure that the, uh, the, the process flow will not be impacted. The, 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 the target is to make the process running safe, not to put extra uh, barrier on it without uh, with the pre uh, preventing it. Of course, when you talk about security, it means more boundaries, make it harder. يعني, like physical security, you can, if you go to your office inside, the, let's say, the plant or the refinery, without physical guards inside, uh, in front of you, you will reach it faster. With the physical guards, you, they will delay you, but they will ensure or having a little bit insurance of security on the, uh, on the environment there. So it is a trade and balance, and it's joint effort. And they have to, at the end of the day, refer to a standard which be the judge when they found the solution. Okay, thank you. Okay, waiting for my question. And our final question before Hi. lunch. Your name, your company, and your question, sir. from Impulse International for Telecommunication Kuwait, as, uh, which has, the question has been raised from uh, Aramco, which is uh, really thanks for their questions. But today, the main needs is to secure business 
and assure the business movement it's not affected without any defining a lot of security levels and uh, requirements. So uh, I know that is that the main impacted, which is the oil sectors, and there is a huge investment happening in the security, but whatever is investment happening in the security, it's affected heavily, as we said, that, that the business as usual, which supposedly. Uh, and we forget the main concept today, I think so one of the points is you said the innovation, and everything is moving to a mobility devices. So what we have today, we have the smartphones, we have the tablets, we have a lot of that is equipment which can be carried out out of office and you do the whole your business as, as regulars. But the problem to that is what's happened. Whatever we do in, in huge layers of building the security in terms of networking wise, once that, let's say the users is go outside uh, using any public internet, we are losing the huge flavors of the huge deployment for the security. And today, the malicious, the malwares, which is creating a huge attack, and, and it's going through the weakest point, which is the users, uh, which that the regular customers, and there where that is all the threats happening, can I understand how you will be taking care of all these uh, security layers from your side. Your question is uh, how we secure, uh, in, for example, KMBC, our network, you mean? Yes. We, we're taking into consideration the mobility? Yep. Okay. Uh, as I said, uh, I, by the way, I'm an IT guy. I'm not in, uh, from the b b business uh, b uh, process. So uh, protecting the network uh, from IT, as we said, we are 27,000 ISO certified uh, in KMBC. So it's... Uh, the, uh, the three things. You have to uh, have policies and procedure in the place. You have to increase the awareness of the people. And of, of course, implementing security solutions there. And any solution come uh, or a new, like you said, ab an application which you want to put it for the public, it should be going through a security process or uh, steps that before you publish it to the, to the public, and start using it. So it's not uh, one thing, it's multiple uh, things you have to address it. And still there is, might be coming holes, like heart bleed is just, uh, uh, it was there, but we, we know about it just recently. And we have to revise all our measures and doing it, uh, uh, closing uh, uh, that protocol if it is opened and uh, disable any, any communication using it. So it is a journey. It's not a, a, a one, two, three, and then خلاص, we are done. No, it's a journey. We have to go through it to secure our, our uh, and keep the, our network is security. I, I hope uh, I answered your questions. OK. OK, thank you. And uh, my question before uh, the lunch and the praying break is I mentioned in my uh, presentation two Bs and one T as a protection dimension that you have to take care about it regardless of any security standard you are implementing. And uh, I want somebody to mention those three. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, you know, sir. Yes. Y your name? Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Muthu. I am from Petro Cold and Pump Petroleum Services Company. The two P's and one T is uh, people, process, and technology. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Akbar Al Malafi, and I believe a prize is on its way to you, sir. Well done, and thank you very much for your engagement, ladies and gentlemen. May I remind you all that the prayer rooms are down this corridor and all the way at the end. 
during lunch, we're going to have a roaming iPad for surveys. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you see an iPad working its way to you, please greet them fondly and answer some of their questions. We're now going to be breaking for our 50-minute lunch. It is a buffet lunch, and of course, the buffet is located behind me, and then there are three locations, two to sit, and one with cocktail tables. Ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to welcoming you back at 10 minutes past one. Bon appetit, enjoy lunch. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC.